Hi everyone, I'm really pleased to be joined by Stephen Johnson here from KUKA UK Manchester and we'll have a fantastic conversation all about apprenticeships, training and investing into young people. So thank you Stephen for joining us today. Thank you. Stephen, KUKA and yourself are massively into encouraging the rest of the industry to hire young people. What do you do here? We are driven to have youth within the business. Uh, I'm 53. Um, as a child from the age of 16, I've grown up in this industry, so it's hugely important to me that we um, continue to bring youth in. Mm -hmm. And I think we are an ageing industry, okay. which makes it even more important that we focus on that. Okay. What would you say when some would say, well, that's all very well, Stephen, but when we bring a young person in, we've got to pay to train that person. What would you say to that? I think in any business, anybody you bring in, you have to pay to train. So I think that would be marginally short-sighted. Okay. For me, any of the, the younger people that we brought on and invested in training them has been absolutely mm. beneficial. Mm. I think you have to approach it on the basis that some you will lose, some won't stay. Mm -hmm. But I think that is, as, as with everything, you, you will, we make presentations to sell product that we spend a lot of money on and sometimes we're not successful in getting that, right. but that's business. So do you have an example you could share where you've taken someone that's young, hasn't got experience, that you've made successful or that added immediate value to your business? Yeah, if I look in my, in my Manchester sales team through the window here, the average age is 18. Right. The youngest person there is 16. Um, I've got two 16 year olds in there. Okay. One boy, one, one, one male, one female. Okay. Um, one A grade grammar school student. Okay. Left school at 16 because he didn't want to go to university okay. and heard that KUKA was a good place to further his education. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is I've got the 16 year old female that grew up in a disadvantaged neighborhood, okay. didn't have the benefit of good education, um, great work ethic, really personable. Yeah. Um, they are my best performers in that team by a long, long way. Okay, so at KUKA, I understand that you arrange your own standards or your own apprenticeship training modules. So can you explain how that works and what do the individuals feel after training? So the, so, so the first thing is we don't differentiate because of age. Okay. So if you are a 16 year old, an 18 year old, you will get the same advantages, you'll be treated exactly the same way as a 27 year old, a 35 year old who's married with kids. So we, we don't draw a difference because they're new to the business. Everybody will get the same privileges, same rewards, and same opportunities. Okay. There, there is no difference between the youth coming in yeah. and the more mature individual coming into the business. Okay. I'm just trying to understand. So if there's a choice for a retailer or a manufacturer about going to a provider for an apprentice or doing it themselves, I'm just trying to understand the difference between the two and the reason you've taken the decision to do your own in-house training. I think the apprenticeship schemes, um, th there aren't too many for our industry. I think that's the first thing that we need to address. So, specific. Uh, specific apprenticeship schemes. I think the, the industry is, falls way behind other industries in delivering um, apprenticeship schemes that are fit for purpose. Um, so for me, that needs a great deal of work. Mm -hmm. um, as a consequence of that, we decided that we would develop our own apprenticeship schemes. Do I like the word apprenticeship? I probably don't. They're just youth we're bringing into the business and we're looking to educate them. Um, but we didn't like what apprenticeship schemes were on offer, so that's the reason we decided to do it ourselves. Is there a better word, you think, than apprentice? Is there better terminology? Yeah, well, I, I think you are, I, I look at it and I think why the, the individuals that come into the business are learning the business, but equally, if I take somebody on at 25, 26, they're new to my business, so they, they get the same training as, an, uh, uh, as the apprentice does. So for me, okay. we don't do use that word. Okay. Uh, we don't want them labelled as something different within the business. You don't say trainee? Not at all. Okay. I, I absolutely, um, I don't like that word. No. Okay. Um, nor do I like rep. No, yeah. well, that's another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, Stephen Johnson, the rep speaker senior. Yeah. So, yeah. The rep. That's it. So, so, so in, in your business, um, somebody would come in and they would be um, trained on every aspect of the business? 
as part of their curriculum? Yeah, for, for everybody that joins our business, we have a 12-week induction programme that will principally start with the heritage, history of the company, right. understand who you're working for, and we're very fortunate at KUKA to have an amazing heritage and history. It's, it's a wonderful story and really exciting. Um, so we want them to understand the, the heritage and history and then start to understand our culture uh, at KUKA, and, and that takes some time. Um, following that, they have to be able to sell and promote the product to an end user or, or, or a business client. So they have to understand the product, mm -hmm. be able to sell it, and promote it, right. because for me that's really important, whatever area of the business you're in, you're selling and you're promoting yourself. Mm. So they have to be able to do that. They then have to go out with a field service engineer, okay. understand what it's like to install a tap, Good. service a tap. Good. They then work in the warehouse and in dispatch. So it's a 12 week program where you go through every single department of the business mm. Mm. and start to understand our culture, our methodology and, and how we want to work at, yeah. in our business. Okay. So so. On the back of that, your advice back to the industry could be if you're taking on young people or indeed older people into your company to properly make sure they understand the culture, each division, each department to make it successful. Yeah, absolutely. That, that for me is a golden period yeah. for everybody. I think you find lots of businesses where they bring people in, they get a week to train and learn yeah. everything, then they're put into the business and, yeah. and have to deliver. Okay. For, for us, it's important they deliver, but we look at it over a year period. Okay. And the first 12 weeks, they acclimatize themselves, get used to the people in the business, build their relationships understand what we're about, yeah. um, understand how we work. Yeah. But for me, it's, yeah, not for the, they don't settle in for six, nine months. Right. It's, um, somebody doesn't become ultimately settled. Yeah. I've been here 17 years, I'm still learning. Right, <laughs> as we all do every single oh, learning day. Every day, 100%. every day. So, so if somebody comes to work for you, what outside training resources do you provide, or is everything done in house? We do. We bring in external resource, but but we we do the training in house. So our induction training mm -hmm. is all business related. Yep. So you will be partnered with yep. team members and different partners. Okay. You'll have a mentor, uh, and they will explain each and every department. Okay. Um, we also work with a sports psychologist in the business. Okay, good. So we do some um, induction work yep. with him. Yep. He does some work with the individual, yeah. we assess them, we assess them as an individual, their well-being, um, how they prefer to operate, yeah. their behaviour traits. Is this positive thinking as well? This is like bringing the motivation higher? Uh, we, I'm a, we, we work on motivation in KUKA, there is only ever motivational talk. We don't, um, as a business, I don't subscribe to um, micromanaging and aggressively managing people. We like to adopt a culture where people understand what they're coming to work to do, okay. how they're going to do it, and what will make it successful. Mm. Um, we have a mantra here yeah. that today we will do better than we did yesterday. Okay. Um, and that's what we work to, just to constantly improve okay. with the customer central to what we do. Great, and so how important, Stephen, is team events, team bonding? What, what do you do here at KUKA? absolutely hugely important um, for me the mindset of the staff yeah. the well-being of the staff um, is massively important okay. um, I want them to come to work and perform okay. I want them motivated I want them driven so we invest significant in that from sports psychology and um, we had our winter conference last week okay. where we developed a company creed so it's this real family ethos, that's what you're doing there, isn't it? Um, I, For me, it starts with me, if my staff are happy, motivated, yeah. and enjoy coming to work, yeah. I think they will do a better job than that if they are not motivated, yeah. happy and well. So, so my philosophy is, the happier I can make them, the more comfortable they are, yeah. the better they will probably be. We spoke about um, when you come to work, first thing in the morning, what you do as the boss when you come into that office. Explain to people what you do. Um, I will come into the office. Mm -hmm. I used to get in earlier than most of them, but I'm a bit old now, 53, so I sometimes arrive a little bit later than they do. Okay. But I will make a point of speaking to every single member of the staff mm -hmm. with a hello, how are you, mm -hmm. and a little bit of a chat. And I think there's 30 people in this office, there's 60 people across the road. It will take me 
20, 25 minutes, mm. but mm. what an amazing start to the day. That's great advice as well. It, it, really beneficial and, and, and sometimes you find yourself ending up in conversations where you actually resolve problems, yeah. you help them with, with, with matters. Yeah. So hugely important to me, Perfect. hugely important. Perfect. I'd like to come back on to um, the industry and what other people are doing uh, compared to what you're doing here. Tell me, tell me Stephen, do you feel any frustration when you look at your um, trading partners, associations, institutes in the industry in terms of what they're doing to drive hiring young people to our marketplace? Because we all know we have a skills gap and that's getting potentially bigger. So how, how do you feel about the level of um, support that everyone around us is giving in terms of what you're doing and they're perhaps not doing? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an impatient person, which, um, yeah, has, has part made me successful, so mm -hmm. impatient, um, really frustrated. Um, but I'm careful because actually pre-2020, I wasn't really that aware of the issue. And I think it was um, just into COVID and I, I had a chance meeting with Damien at the BIKBBI. Um, and we were talking about installers and, and skills gap and um, was I dismissed? I was, yeah, okay, fine, and, and, and Damien left. I, I then took a look at my installer base and I'm thinking, wow, these, these are 50-year-old, 55-year-old males. No diversity. So how many installers do you have on we, we had at that time 55, inst 55 installers 55 at that time. 55 installers. All male. Average age of? 50 plus. 40, 50 plus, all male. Yeah. But we're really interesting because when you look at the rest of my business, it just wasn't that. Right. If you look where anywhere else in my business, I am diverse, I want youth. Yeah. And diversity, really, for, for me, is absolutely critical. Right. And we have that everywhere in our business. And I looked at our installation business and I thought, wow, yeah. there's a huge problem here. Yeah. And, and, and I'm part of that problem. Yeah. Um, and I woke up to that. So from that point on, um, We've done a lot of work with Damien and it's horrific mm. and it's a worry, it's frustrating. Yeah. Are we making progress? To be frank, we're in a really difficult position. So what, what has KUKA done directly to address that potential problem in say 10 years time? So to, 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 twofold, we, we've invested in Damien and the BIKBB, okay. £250,000 so that they can develop that's an apprentice impressive. scheme. Yeah. Um, and that's for the wider benefit of the industry. That, that doesn't benefit me in any way at all. Right. I don't access that scheme. So do I don't use that thing. apprentices. Yeah. We invest that yeah. in the industry yeah. because I recognise as a serious this problem. This is a fitted furniture. This is a fitted, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so that's an investment we make in Damien um, with the hope that we can bring apprentices into the industry, which we've done. The next problem is then getting people to recruit those apprentices and take them on. So it's really difficult and challenging and, and despite our investment is really frustrating. It's a worry. Um, we're deep in the, in the middle of it and there doesn't seem to be an awakening what we did at KUKA because we couldn't access the apprentice schemes is we started our own. You know, I simply thought that actually what I need to do in my business is bring in youth into my installer team, youth and diversity. So for the last year, we've worked hard to change our installer model. And I'm delighted to say that we now employ two females, okay. two female installers, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. Is, is fantastic, yeah. really good. Um, and we are partnering up younger individuals, I'll right. call them apprentices for the yeah. purpose of this, yeah. but we will take on younger people and partner them with our more experienced fitters in the hope that when those experienced fitters come to retire, yeah. the younger fitters will take over their role. Perfect. So over next year we will be doubling up our labour force in the field yeah. to, to train the youth. So if you think about the, the average independent kitchen retailer, what advice could you give them if they've got typically doing one kitchen per week with a fitter they've had for years and years and years? Is there any advice you'd give that individual retailer? I would say to them that, that they have to invest in the industry. The industry has been good to them. Yep. They are hopefully a successful business, okay. earning a living out of it. Okay. Um, and we want that to continue. And, and that is, that's where the problem area is. Mm. Because if that business mm. doesn't invest in youth, 
Does it close down? Mm. Uh, um, we have to be really careful because youth today is going to Apple, mm. Facebook, mm. Twitter, mm. Google. There are so many different business opportunities um, that are perceived as more exciting and more rewarding than our industry. Uh, and, and that's a worry for me. And when I look at the rewards in our industry are significant. Yeah. You know, you look at that showroom, they're probably on six figure salaries in that showroom. And you've got, probably got fitters earning 30, 40, 50,000 pounds. So actually as an industry, we, we pay significant rewards, but we need to attract the youth. And, and those small businesses, we have to motivate them somehow to be engaged to do it, but it's really difficult, um, really difficult. Is there anything else that you think that as an industry collectively we should be doing to provide, I don't know, some kind of reference or signposting to help employers hire more young people? Is there anything else we should be doing that we're not doing, Stephen? I mean, we work with the KBSA, the BIKBBI. Um, I think they have a number of initiatives going. Okay. I think there's a lot that we can all do for the industry, but for me, I want other manufacturers like KUKA who benefit from the retailers selling their products. Yes. So we as manufacturers make money from our retailers selling the product, and I would encourage other manufacturers similar to that of KUKA, yeah. if they can. Yeah. And I think what we have to remember is it's challenging times. Um, not everybody is able to invest mm. at the same level. Yeah. But I think I would encourage anybody to invest what they can. Yeah. And even if you can't invest money, yeah. show an interest in it yeah. and help us fix this problem. Shout about it again. Yeah, help us fix the problem. Do you think the average uh, retailer would know about the standards that are available, the grants they can actually claim back, and where to go for an apprentice? Do you think the average retailer would know any of that? No. That's a quick, no. That's a quick answer. No. And there lies the problem. No, and I think the other issue is of the more, are they interested to find that out? Are they looking to give that apprentice mm. an extra job? We are actively looking for youth every single day. Mm. Every single day I'm looking for new talent, new youth mm. within our business. And, and as an industry, I would like us to do the same because I think also our standards have to improve. You know, our, our industry standards have to improve. We, 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 we're seen as second rate. If you speak to people like kitchen, bedroom and bathroom people, they're always seen as second rate citizens, like the double glazing people of the old. And I think we play such an integral part in somebody's house. So there lies a problem potentially of who's gonna do that. Because individually people can do what they want, but there doesn't seem to be a collective one voice saying, actually guys, this is where you go. This is what you need to be doing. My, my hope is the work that we're going to embark on with the KBSA. Um, we, we're embarking on a project in 2023 where we're hoping to make that a stronger organisation, acquire more membership so that it's a voice for the industry. Um, but I, I agree with you, there is a lack of voice. But I wonder who, does, who in industry is responsible for doing that. I guess uh, this kind of thing today that we're doing, you're, you're going to be helping to get that message out there to say to business, hire more young people. Let's sort this out. But we can't do it individually, we have to do it collectively. Yeah, there, there needs to be an appetite for it. And, and what I have found when you invest in youth, it's amazingly beneficial for your business. It's taken years off me. Years off me. Because <laughs> yeah, there are skill sets that a young person will bring that somebody perhaps older wouldn't be able to. They're, they're that's facts. They're, this is the, yeah, they're hungry. They know no boundaries. Um, they're motivated. They're driven. Um, they bring um, a happiness to the office. They don't have life pressures of, of married people with kids and families. So it adds a, an amazing dynamic to the office. And if you can if you can control it, mm. foster it and develop it. Mm. It's amazing, my, my head of sales, Daniel, has been with me 10 years. Mm -hmm. He joined mm -hmm. me at 16, yeah. um, part way through university course. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to finish his university course. He said, I love it here so much, I don't want to go back to university. I said, not a chance. You mm -hmm. go back to university, mm -hmm. you finish your degree, mm -hmm. and I promise you faithfully, if you come back with a degree, the job is yours. Mm. And he went to university, finished his degree, came back and the job was his. And he, he started in sales for me, I think at the age of 18. He's now 27. Right. 
and he's my second in command. He's running 40 or 50 people here, and his skill sets at 27 are incredible. He, he's learned every single facet of this business. Impressive. He knows the industry inside out. So do you think that when an education leader has the options that um, education, that's you know, high schools, colleges, give the right information about, you could go and do on the job learning and get paid while you learn, or you could go to university. Which one do you think people are still getting told to do? I think the, the curriculum and the advice you get at school is horrendous. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not an academic. Mm -hmm. I didn't like school. Mm -hmm. I hated the prospect of sitting in a classroom. Um, I didn't like teaching methods. Right. I really struggled with it. And you don't get much support or help. I was really, really fortunate that my father was a successful businessman. Mm -hmm. And my route into this industry was a given. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into his business and he's going to teach me everything I knew. So I had a route. And I think with school and, and universities, people leave now with, with not too many life skills. You know, they might be able to do a bit of maths and a bit of English, but life's mortgages, heating bills, council tax, life skills, they, they, they don't come with life skills. And even at uni, they, they, I, find it, I find it troubling. So for me, I think it's really difficult for individuals of that age to determine where they're going right. and is there much guidance? I'm not sure. Okay. I think as an industry we could do workshops when unis, you know, I think as an industry, yeah. you know, how, how do we improve this? I think we have to take our industry to the schools and the universities and say, you know, kitchen design, kitchen fitting, mm -hmm. there are some amazing jobs here with some amazing Should, salaries. Could, could that be, taking that really good point, could that be uh, controlled locally, ad hoc, or could that be controlled centrally by the industry? For me, I think it needs to be controlled by the industry. So for me, I, I would love to see a driven, dynamic industry body um, that whilst protects the, 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 the retailers, also ensures that we're bringing youth and, and, and developing the industry. That is, is really missing, really missing, and quite how we fix it, I'm not sure. So thank you, Stephen, for uh, completing section one. And that's all about information back to the industry. So I hope people have enjoyed what they're seeing so far. We're going to move on to section two, which is all about the commercials now of what you're doing here and what advice we can offer back in a challenging market moving into next year. Thank you.